Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. Medical Termination of Pregnancy or MTP. Medical Termination of Pregnancy or MTP is the intentional or voluntary termination of pregnancy before the full term or it is otherwise called a induced abortion. Nearly 45 to 50 million MTPs are performed a year all over the world. Many countries have not legalized MTP due to emotional, ethical, religious and social issues involved in it. The government of India legalized MTP in the year 1971 with some strict conditions to avoid its misuse. Such restrictions are all the more important to check indiscriminate and illegal female feticides. Why MTP? To get rid of unwanted pregnancies either due to casual unprotected intercourse or failure of the contraceptive used during coitus or pain. MTPs are also essential in certain cases where continuation of the pregnancy could be harmful or even fatal either to the mother or to the fetus or both. MTPs are considered relatively safe during the first trimester that is up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. Second trimester abortions are much more riskier. Another dangerous trend is the misuse of amniocentesis to determine the sex of the unborn child and if the fetus is found to be a female, it is followed by MTP. This is totally against what is legal. Now coming to sexually transmitted diseases. Diseases or infections which are transmitted through sexual intercourse are collectively called sexually transmitted diseases or venereal diseases, VD, or reproductive tract infections, RTI. Common STDs are caused by bacteria, protozoan, or virus. Bacterial diseases are gonorrhea, syphilis, and chlamydiasis. Protozoan disease is trichomoniasis. And virus can cause genital herpes, genital warts, hepatitis B, HIV leading to AIDS. HIV is the name of the virus causing the disease AIDS. What are the modes of transmission of STD, basically hepatitis B and HIV? Because these two diseases don't have a permanent cure, they are viral diseases. So usually it is transmitted from infected mother to the fetus or blood transmission from an infected person to a healthy person, sexual contact with an infected person, sharing the unsterilized surgical instruments or sharing of injection needles during intravenous drug abuse. What are the symptoms? Two symptoms are there. One is early symptoms and if not treated, complicated symptoms also. Early symptoms include minor itching, fluid discharge, slight pain, swelling, etc. in the genital region. Infected females may often be asymptomatic also. So, it may take time to detect the disease. Now, what are the complications if you are not taking proper treatment on time? Mostly people ignore the initial symptoms because they do not want to go to a hospital or consult a doctor for that matter. But it can lead to complications like pelvic inflammatory diseases like PID. If the woman is in the early stage of pregnancy, it may even lead to abortion, stillbirth, or ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy means the pregnancy happening within the fallopian tube, and infertility or even cancer of the reproductive tract. The age group which is falling under this category of getting infected by STD is 15 to 24 year old age group. How can you prevent it? First is education, counseling and awareness. Avoid sex with unknown partners or multiple partners. Always use condoms during coitus. In case of doubt, go to a qualified doctor for early detection and get complete treatment if diagnosed with disease. Help interrupt the study, climb in STDs with these three steps. Talk openly, test, get tested and get treated. STDs are a major threat to a healthy society. Prevention or early detection and cure of these diseases are given prime consideration under the reproductive health care programs. Last 
but the most important part of this chapter is infertility and assisted reproductive technologies art inability to conceive or produce children even after 2 years of unprotected sex and cohabitation is called a infertility there can be many reasons for infertility it can be physical reasons congenital reasons diseases drugs immunological reasons or psychological reasons specialized healthcare units or infertility clinics could help in diagnosis and corrective treatment of some of these disorders so what are the main assisted reproductive technologies available as of now one is called a in vitro fertilization which is the main way of treating this condition ivf means we call it as test tube baby program though test tube is not used for producing the baby or developing the baby but test tube is a common uh, apparatus which is known to all people common people that's why it is called a test tube baby program it means that it is done artificially in the lab conditions that's called a in vitro in vitro means in the lab condition in vivo means natural next is a gamete intra fallopian transfer these are all associated with the ivf where a gamete will be transferred then intracytoplasmic sperm injection icsi where a sperm is being injected or artificial insemination technique where a man is not able to inseminate naturally artificially inseminated or surrogacy surrogacy means a biological mother is being uh, used for carrying the child in her womb the first one is in vitro fertilization or ivf this is otherwise called a test tube baby program in this method uh, couples who are unable to produce their baby can donate their gametes like a female can give her ovum and male can give his sperm or inability to produce this they can depend on donors also for the gametes and their gametes collected are induced to form zygote under simulated conditions in the laboratory so that is why it's called a in vitro fertilization so once the zygote is formed it will be allowed to multiply to form the embryo so once embryo is formed it has to be given back to the mother's body for development of the fetus so there are two ways of transferring it back depending on the stage at which it is done that is called a embryo transfer if the zygote is up to 8 blastoma year stage or 8 celled stage then it is transferred back to fallopian tube from there normally it will come down to the uterus and get implanted this is called a zift zygote intra fallopian transfer here though we are telling zygote it is an embryo up to 8 blastoma year stage and it is transferred into the fallopian tube suppose if it is more than that then more than 8 blastoma years means we have to give it directly to the uterus where it will get implanted and grow in such case also if the mother is not genetic mother is not able to carry the child in her womb then they can look for surrogate mother also embryos are also formed up by in vivo fertilization means fusion of gametes within the body of female then it can be used for transfer to assist those females who cannot conceive also another one technology here is gift you know we receive gift from people here also a woman who is not able to produce her own gamete is receiving a gamete from a donor as a gift she doesn't have any other problem in bearing the child so what happens is she collects or oh, an ovum from a donor which will be injected directly into her fallopian tube and her husband can inseminate her naturally fertilization will happen in her fallopian tube and she can carry the baby in her womb so here in this case uh, the problem is she is a biological mother but she is not the genetic mother of the baby another case is when male is not able to inseminate his wife or the sperm is not in, uh, enough to inseminate or uh, fertilize the ovum we know 60% of the sperm produced should have proper shape and at least 40% should have vigorous motility so in any problem related to this uh, another specialized procedure is there where the sperm will be directly injected into the uh, ovum so this is called a intracytoplasmic sperm injection then uh, another case where the male is not able to inseminate uh, his wife 
uh, due to some uh, accident or some other conditions the semen can be collected from the husband most probably or if he is not able to produce semen can be from a healthy donor also then it is artificially introduced into the vagina of the female if the female is uh, physiologically okay for conceiving then this is called a intrauterine insemination then natural fertilization will happen and it is usually useful in male infertility cases provided the female is per physiologically perfect then in spite of producing the embryo or zygote if the mother is not able to carry the child there comes the question of surrogacy where a woman or a surrogate mother bears a child for a couple uh, unable to produce their children because the wife is infertile or unable to carry the surrogate mother is impregnated either through artificial insemination or through implantation of the embryo produced by in vitro fertilization usually it is done for monetary benefit from the surrogate mother's side what are the problems associated with the art art requires high precision handling by specialized professionals and expensive instrumentation therefore these facilities are presently available only in a very few centers in the country but now the conditions are changing almost all cities have infertility clinic but we have to see the expertise and the, uh, uh, the specialized professionals available in such institutions their benefits is affordable to only a limited number of people especially the cost involved in ivf is a bit high emotional religious and social factors are also deterrents in the adoption of this method because once the especially in the case of uh, taking gametes from donor there can be a question of the paternity maternity in later life so all these are the problems associated with art so the best way to avoid all these is the adoption it, uh, here couples can adopt a child legally so that at least they can give life to a child hope you understood all the concepts i discussed very well if so please like share and subscribe to my channel biology my passion thank you for watching